Welcome. Welcome, welcome. That's better. What an awkward way to start the podcast. Well, today we're going to talk about growing Moringa, which is something I think anybody can do. I want to share with you my experience. I just started really getting into Moringa about six months ago. And uh, I've been aware of it for years, but never really grew an interest in it. But once I really looked into it, I discovered that it is incredibly nutrient dense and you don't have to take my word for it because you can just go on wikipedia and type in moringa tree and it will show you the standard vitamin levels in the leaves and in the fruit etc but the leaves are really high in all kinds of vitamins and minerals the seeds not as much but still high they actually in some countries and they maintain their super high vitamin C content so this is like multivitamin you can grow in your backyard I'll show you how I've grown the moringa trees I now have in my yard some of them actually were eaten by the chickens they're highly edible but uh, most of them survived and I have outside of where there are chickens this is what I bought and it was about ten dollars I don't know I don't think it's much different than any pack of moringa seeds you would buy so I don't think it matters that it's this kind but this is what they look like they come out of a fruit that grows on the moringa tree called a drumstick typically and uh, you'll get a handful of these from each moringa drumstick once the tree's going you get a good amount of fruit production um, but I think most people will trim their moringa tree way back in order to harvest lots of the leaves they grow like a crop that way they are uh, heavy grower, really resilient. If you trim them way back, they come in strong with lots of shoots and fresh leaves. People dry those out, make teas, and they've got a multivitamin like no other. In some, some countries, they claim, uh, all kinds of people claim that this is the number one thing to extend longevity of your life. So really cool thing to be aware of, really cool thing to grow. I grow them from seeds. A lot of people grow them from cuttings. Both ways are good. My research, <clears throat> excuse me, revealed that if you grow them from seeds, they grow much stronger than if you grow them from cuttings. That seemed to be the general assertion made across what I researched. So I grew them from seeds and I found out that I could easily grow them from seeds. Now I could eat these seeds, just like that. But let's take a look at them and I'll actually try to get to a sunny part of the yard. Hey, Treasure Outdoors. Thanks for jumping on. Yeah. So your experience lines up with that, that the seed grows stronger than the cutting. Yeah, and I think the other thing is if you don't continuously trim these trees, they won't do their best either. I mean, they kind of get leggy and uh, start not doing what you want them to do the most, which is produce the leaves. All right, so here's one of the seeds. And I'm gonna see if I can do it with just one hand, but Really all it's a matter of is just kind of cracking this outer shell off. Yeah, I don't, they'll get to be 35 feet tall, which is pretty tall. And I would claim you're not going to be, yeah, it's a very soft shell, by the way. I'm just kind of picking at it with my thumbnail, and there you go. Okay, so I broke through to that white seed. And I think that's all you need, is just to be able to break, break through that shell, reveal the seed in the bottom so that the water can get through and it's ready to plant. Do that several more times and you're ready to plant these. I'm actually going to plant a bunch of them today. In Florida this time of the year, it is Treasure Outdoors will tell you. By the way, go check out Treasure Outdoors YouTube channel for anybody who's watching this live stream. Super cool. Goes and finds treasure underneath our feet is exactly what we're trying to do here and uh, anyway so these seeds keep on giving I could grow a whole forest of these I actually planned to and then my little chicky doos ate up a few of my nice ones but hey 
What can you do? Don't cry over uh, spilled milk. Let's go say hi to the chicky dudes. Happy chickies? Oh yeah, they think they're getting mealworms. So they get very excited when I do this, get down low like this. Yeah. They've had lots of free range time today, so they're doing just fine. Um, where I had the, the moringa tree here was over there. Now, I'm actually decided to limit the chickens' access to a lot of stuff, so I'll mostly just let them free free range in the in the bunny run from here on out, so this stuff won't get tagged anymore. But I ended up even putting this pot over the moringa. And uh, just to save it, right, because it wants to grow, and it's doing fine, but these two were doing fantastic. You can see this is scorched earth. Hashtag chicken life, man. <laughs> Look at that. Dude, that was, a, that was a red radish that was hardy and thriving, and it is gone. Those chickens love that, so anything they love is gone. This is my carrot patch. That's all gone. It's my own fault, but anyway, I'm going to let these two moringas grow back, and we're going to actually put a little chicken wire around this vegetable garden. We'll be adding compost from the two bins over there. A little bit and I might even plant some more moringa trees here we're gonna keep them you know cut them down almost to the ground every time and just let them grow back up and shoot is the plan so we're not worried about having the the 35 foot tall trees here look at that sky look at that blue the ultimate ultimate color blue the pigeon peas seem to be able to take the wind I kind of uh, wondering what it would do when it got up into the stronger sea breeze. I mean, it's noon, so it's already starting to blow a little bit. We're actually going to go down to the beach here shortly and swim. There's a beautiful south wind going down the beach today, southeast wind. So Jack and I will enter, we'll walk way south and then get in and just drift with the current and the waves. But anyhow, we don't want our carrot patch to continue to be decimated or a moringa tree so we're going to protect against that but i thought i would also show you i actually have a plan for this live stream so i also wanted to show you one that's growing here in a pot that i haven't planted yet those need water this is what i mean everything becomes scorched to earth if you don't just continue i haven't watered it in a day and a half this is a moringa i grew from one of these seeds there it is, and that is about eh, maybe three months old, four months old. I'm going to show you some moringas that are in the ground too, that are little sprouties. And I think the main thing is, based on what I've read, is to keep the tap root, you know, to get the tap root established and strong, keep it watered initially, and then you should be okay. It can withstand severe drought. But that that's the important step is in the beginning. So this one's ready to go. You know, taproot's bound by this long pot. I tried. I like this long pot because it allows a taproot more. But really, the key will be to get this in the ground. Just haven't decided exactly where. I might use this to replace the moringa trees that were wiped out by the chicken apocalypse, and then put a some chicken wire around it to insulate it from the chicken experience. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and plant this one since I'm already here. Right, push that one down. It wouldn't be too hard to just throw two more in there and then I'd have that. But really what I want to do is have multiple chances to win in every pot. I'll probably plant at least two seeds. So I'll come back and do that in a moment. But Oh, look at these little tamarind trees grown from seeds took forever for those seeds to sprout but they caught on Hawaiian papayas yeah my little tamarind trees are growing from seeds these are sour tamarind now sa these do not grow true to seed as my research has indicated in other words you don't know what the quality of the fruit is going to be it's a lot like a Suriname cherry you just kind of have to roll the dice if you grow it from a seed and uh, try the fruit and if not you know get rid of it if you don't like the the fruit but anyway i've got a bunch growing back here so yeah I'm, I'm stoked on that all right let's go take a look at a couple that i you know all these moringa were planted around the same time and of course my like i said my objective here is just to hopefully motivate and inspire people to whatever extent to go ahead and do this 
little experiment here to grow this nutrient in their yard and become way more self-sustaining. And it's fun. I mean, more importantly. But look at that. This one. Same deal. Doing well. Really, really like the look of that. And it'll take the full sun. I've got it right next to another champion of sun worship, which is this gigantic Persian mulberry. Look at the size of that thing. The leaf is just gigantic. It's kind of struggling with the salt water on the leaves, but struggling through. Once it gets up above that, it should do pretty well. And another rock star among edible backyards is, of course, the pigeon pea. I planted most of the ones that I grew. I had a handful of seeds, and I grew them in every which way I could. But, uh, yeah, the pigeon pea is another strong producer of a high-protein fruit that comes in perennial so you can harvest it for years and it's very very easy to go once you, to grow once you have a pigeon pea you're likely to not not have pigeon peas again because they're such prolific growers and droppers of seeds peas really super cool now this is a I'll share this with you since we're in the area these two little Tommy Atkins mangoes are preparing to be grafting rootstock however I am experimenting with grafting mango branches onto my Tommy Atkins mango tree currently maybe I'll show you how that my first attempt went be willing to be both the fool and the hero they're the same exact thing I always say and I'm learning grafting I got a sweet Victorian ox you know like the Swiss Army uh, grafting Pen knife, I love pen knives. So cool to have such a useful tool, but it's really sharp. I've always had good luck with those knives. So I bought that, I'm so happy about it. I went and bought another knife too, which was like a pocket and slimline pocket knife from them. Anyway, love that as well. This is a star fruit tree, carambola tree. The chicken's got it that too, and you can see it looks more like a Charlie Brown Christmas tree right now. Uh, we're going to let that limp back to health. I'm going to give it some bunny manure, and uh, that should give it the nutrients it needs to rock on. I need to figure out what to do with this Buddha belly bamboo. By the way, I've got lots of videos on the channel about how to grow bamboo from cuttings. This, there was a video made when I did this. Uh, it's very easy to grow. I'd encourage you to try some clumping bamboos grown in pots from cuttings. That's a very fun hobby to do. At one point I grew... 20 pots of the Bambusa vulgaris uh, and Bambusa vulgaris wamen, which is what this is. The wamen is the dwarf bulging type. And, um, which you can see, you know, kind of on that cutting, you can see how it bulges out there. And then the wamen uh, is a sub relative to the Bambusa vulgaris, which has a couple of sub variants to it, like the Hawaiian stripe, which is a very yellow, it looks like green paint stripes, drip, drip stripes down the canes. And then there's just the regular Bambusa vulgaris, which is the green timber bamboo. It kind of has an arching growth. The wood is very starchy in the uh, vulgaris bamboo. Uh, I would say I'd say it's not great for woodworking stuff unless you really cure it right. One way they deal with these kinds of bamboos is to cure that, cure the to cure the cane on the clump. That's how I do it, and that gives me I think the best cure on drying it. Have I heard? Hey, Palm Nation, good to see you. Have you heard of the pink velvet banana, Musa Volunt? I lost the comment. Hold on, I'm gonna bring it back up. All right, have you heard of the uh, pink velvet banana, Musa Volatina? I got one of those now. Oh, that's cool. No, I haven't. I think, I wonder how many varieties of Musa banana there are. I'm glad you asked that question, thanks gonna be too awkward to plant all these moringa trees but I think that's probably the summary of where I'm at with moringas I've just had great success growing them from seeds seems like all you need to do is pierce that shell with your thumbnail and you can plant it and grow it I've, I've grown two or three in a pot and usually at least one comes up when I plant them directly in the ground they almost seem to all come up so that's another great way to do it just direct plant them where you want them to grow and watch that area 
All right, let's see. Oh, I'll also tell you about the Moringa just to finish up that subject that the Moringa research I did revealed to me that the taproot can be somewhat sensitive. So if you're transplanting them and so on, just be careful of that. I had no problem transplanting potted Moringa and having it do very well, but I read that people do have problems with that for what it's worth. Okay, so the Musa banana, I wonder how many varieties of Musa there are. Musa or a Noko. Extremely common. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, that Orinoco can grow as far north as Tennessee. Super cool. Can't imagine living in Tennessee and having palm trees and bananas waving around. So cool. Yeah. These are Musa, but I'm not sure what variety. Oh yes, you see a coconut tree here. This is a green dwarf Malay coconut. I think I got the words in the wrong order, but it's a... Yeah, it, but anyway. Green dwarf Malay coconut. I've got, I actually went ahead and bought four. This is a pathetic story. I found a nursery finally. I was looking all over the place. There's one guy locally that was selling like a decent sized single one for like $75. And most of the plants he has are just garbage anyway. So anyway, I finally found a nursery a little bit farther south, went down there. They had just stacks of dwarf coconut trees. <laughs> they had one growing right up next to this house. This was a little like a house that all, you know, the whole yard has been converted into a nursery and they had everything. I bought a, a green dwarf Malay coconut and brought that home with a sweet tamarind tree, which you'll see one of those over here. Oh, I got to look at the name of the nursery. I actually don't know it off the top of my head. It was in Wabasso, Florida. Uh, it was on the riverside, not on the beach side, uh, right near the downtown Wabasso. So on Google Maps, you could probably see it. It's a real small place. I thought their prices are reasonable. I thought they were cool people to deal with. So I, I definitely recommend them. And here's my experience. I went there and bought this thing and one or two other things. And then I just, it haunted me for the next three days. And I just went back down and bought three more coconut trees. And then also, or no, yeah, three more coconut trees. And then I also bought a, a pick -a bean palm, which is a very interesting palm tree. I recently did a short video about that on the channel. Pick -a bean. They called the pick bean the new foxtail because it's very similar kind of application landscaping wise. But the pick bean palm has a little bit more narrow. It actually kind of looks like this in its trunk, you know, but it, the fronds are uh, like the similar size in relation to the trunk to the foxtail, but a much different structure. It's not like that, you know, puffed out foxtail look. It's more like a coconut, but uh, somewhere between maybe an areca and a coconut a very graceful palm tree. And apparently those are getting really popular and I snagged one of those. So I got the three coconut trees for 50 bucks a pop and then the um, pick a bean was 60. But they were healthy, you know, and they're big rooted. One of the things I like to see is when I buy the potted fruit tree, when you take it out of the pot, does it have roots that come to the edge of the pot, right? And everything I bought there was Definitely passing that test and then some. Oh, okay. Premier Growers in Pine Island, I sure will. Thanks for the tip. I love that. A few things I love more than just going to a nursery and finding like these key little edibles or something that's, you know, healthy there that everywhere else you looked, it was gross. And then I say, that's why I have a truck. Let's just uh, imagine where we can put the next fruit tree. So I think I could have more palm trees, certainly. And you see this open, this open sunny area certainly tempts me to add in filler things in the, from a permaculture setup, you know, to get the overstory, understory, herbaceous layer, all that stuff going. Just to plant a moringa right in there and just make this, you know, a heavily trimmed area. You know, I need to get a sable miner. <laughs> Okay, 
Well, I, I guess I could go on a hunt for a sable miner around here and harvest some seeds. That would be uh, pretty cool. I'm sure there's one in the in the neighborhood. <laughs> one hundred, maybe. You you know you do you go you go up with the drone and you just find it. <laughs> you have to know what the aerial profile of a uh, sable miner is. Another thing we love this time of year, I'll just point out since I'm out here. By the way, it's, I'm stoked everybody's on the uh, live stream. Go ahead and leave a comment if you're on. See, we got a bunch. That's cool. Makes it way more fun, and I always appreciate it. Yeah, the plumeria, and I talk about this a lot, but... Uh, another just diverse, incredible, beautiful, easy to grow thing you know they use these for lays in Hawaii of course used for commercial perfume production and you take one sniff of these flowers and you know why and also as, as a sniffer of many plumeria they all have a slightly different smell yeah. they also make great mulch which is uh, convenient oh, loving my lime tree can't say enough about it. Kiefer lime. Yeah, an example of one I didn't like was, well, okay, so I got this one at Lowe's, which is a Valencia orange tree, and it's just kind of frozen in its state. I don't, I see a, maybe a little bit of bulging on this orange tree's nodes, but nothing encouraging happening there. I bought this grapefruit tree there also, and uh, it was, it, the roots did not reach the edge of the pot. Basically, when I planted it, the edge of the soil fell out the sides it was, oh, it was a disaster but here it is love the one you're with folks and i do i still love it it has tremendous potential but it's definitely way past its moments of any false glory i just keep hitting it with the rabbit manure the vermiculture it'll pull through grapefruit trees are so hardy so resilient this is going to be a champ. It's just got to get through this uh, adversity, which it's currently in. It also is getting buffeted by some salty sea breezes. So that doesn't exactly help. Oh wow, yeah, the the fig tree this time of year. That's a great topic, by the way, pollination. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. The fig trees do seem to just stall out at some point in the summer. When it gets super hot, I think they're just over it. And mine will also, as soon as it rains, they just swell up, all the fruits swell up, and they can get open ends on the brown turkey. Oh, look at this. That one has a little ways to go. Yeah, these are the brown turkey, of course, in the rabbit run. Uh, a lot of, lot of plump figs. Without a doubt, a lot of plump figs. But looking for ripe ones. We cleaned it off last night, so these are all newly discovered. Eh, not much more. I did actually graft a cutting of the Janiri fig tree right here. That's a graft. And it looks like it's still alive, so we'll see. We'll see. I want to make a fruit cocktail fig tree. That's my goal. We'll see if I can do that. See you in two years. See if it, <laughs> that's a, it's a two-year plan for sure. Oh, you have branches dying. Yeah, yeah. If the branches are dying, sometimes I wonder if it's got a fungus of some sort. You know, interesting funguses with palms, funguses with fruit trees. So dangerous. Can be. This thing in Florida is common. Look, look at what I found here. This is horrible. That's a type of fungus that if your palm tree gets it, it's done. And this thing died and I was wondering why. But I kind of also know that when a palm tree that's been this successful just immediately starts to wilt, it's probably got the fungus. And I think this fungus has happened to this tree and I think it's now happened to this tree, the Eureka palm. What a bummer, but I'll have to get rid of all of this and try to sterilize it with alcohol because I do actually not want that to start happening, which is for everything to start getting that fungus.
But, you know, that's why we've got a constant cycle of growth and rebirth here. I count on that areca palm to be my only areca palm. By the way, this year I'm going to be eating the fruit. Because I realized they're delicious. But uh, here's areca palm. New clump started. That's going to do great right there. It's been living under bunny turds and worm tea its whole life. And I believe it will do quite well. Yeah, these are all different kinds of banana cuttings here. This is good, the mystery grove of bananas, all from clumps that I thought were awesome. And we'll see what happens now. Only time will tell. But I expect many bananas in the future. We have some bananas on there right now. And the chickens didn't get to the bananas, thank goodness. Huh. They, they really died off, yeah. That's the thing about the bananas for me is as soon as they start to... By the way, that's died because it's just not getting enough water. Okay, yeah, it might be. I think one of them is definitely an Orinoco in the, that little collection that I just showed. But uh, I transplanted this whole grove from over there to over here. So now it's not under any power lines and it's doing great. Yeah, it's super dry this year. Camu likes Coca-Cola. <laughs> I totally agree. It's crazy dry. You got to be out there watering it every night or you're not going to win. But look at this. Here's one I transplanted. It started to wilt. It looked not so good. I just hit it with the machete. Just psh, gone. And then immediately the sprout shot up. So that's a good way to deal with it. I'm going to do that. Any cuttings that I plant that, oh yeah, my chick, look, my chickies are crying. Please let me out. That's the sound that they're saying. Let me out. I'll let them out after this. Yeah, usually we can count on a little rain in June. I don't know. We were watching the rain yesterday. It looked like it was going straight by us. It was just running parallel to us all day long from going from north to south. Or south to north. Yeah, south to north. To north. Just running right by. Yeah, it could be pouring on the land side all day long and just be dry as a bone right here if, if and when it's got that real banded rain just going right up the spine of Florida. We're the last place to get rain. They call it a, a weather bubble, but we have a big area, of course, the Atlantic Ocean, the subtropical Atlantic Ocean, right up five blocks away. And then five blocks the other way, we've got a gigantic three mile wide subtropical lagoon filled with warm water so then this is a barrier island so what happens is the the temperature gradient that occurs during the day in the land of course is much more steep than the water or vice versa whatever anyway it, it causes all the rain land side first and then they roll east typically over us but you can watch the clouds close in all the way around this whole area and it's almost like a bubble straight up because no rain has formed. So it's very arid here. And if you look at pictures of this area back 50 years ago, 100 years ago, it was like low scrub brush, only a gopher tortoise could love type of situation with an occasional probably hammock of uh, live oaks and things like that. Yeah, so this is a freak show, what we've got going here. This is a total freak show. This is what creating a few simple systems can do, you know? And I'm not overdoing it with the water here either. Uh, pretty targeted, pretty targeted. And, and uh, you know, so it's possible to produce this in your yard, certainly. Hey, I think we're gonna run down to the beach, but thanks for jumping on, I appreciate it. Thanks, Palm Nation. Thanks, Camel who drinks Coca-Cola. Thanks, everybody, for jumping on. If you're not subscribed already, please do. Hit the like button if you want to help me out. <laughs> uh, use the links in Amazon when you get stuff on Amazon if you want to help out the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And then the affiliate link uh, gives us funds. Have a good day. Oh, one more thing before I go. I want to give a shout out to my favorite new channel. Uh, it's called Jim and B Farmer. Check that out. It's awesome. Talk to you later.